additional devices and accessories to separate the digit from the rest of the digits. Okay? So this is three to five. This is medial internal rotation for the second digit. Keep in mind again, it's gonna be hard to do. Okay, that can't do this, but again, patient protection, as they're doing this, have them turn away. Get their eyes, their thyroid, and their groin area away from, from the table, okay? <clears throat> so there is going to be more of an increased concavity, increased concavity of the digits on one side and more straight on the other surface, the anterior surface, I'm sorry, posterior surface of the uh, finger. Okay. Now, how do I know this is lateral versus, this is a lateral? Don't they all look the same? No. If it's in the lateral, what's happening to the bones? They're one on top of another. They're superimposed. Because they look kind of similar in structure when you're looking here. They do look similar in structure, right? But this is the giveaway. Look at the metacarpals. Here they're still separate. Okay, but it still looks kind of the same as the lateral. But in the lateral, the metacarpals are superimposed, one on top of the other. Okay? Any questions? Okay, even on the four sides, including this whole metacarpal, so you're good to go. Place your marker within the, uh, the col collimated field. All joints should be demonstrated from your interphalangeal joints. You should also see the carpal, uh, metacarpal phalangeal joints as well. Okay, questions? Okay, so we covered digits. Two to five, two to five. We're treating the first digit separately. We're treating the thumb separately. Okay? We treat it separately because if you look here at our previous image of a true PA, okay, supinated position, PA projection, notice that the hands are flat on the surface. What happened to the thumb? It's oblique. It's oblique, right? So if you get an oblique of the thumb, it's just palm down. Your thumb is already on an oblique position. Pretty cool, right? So then, if it's in an oblique position, how are we gonna get it into an AP or PA position? You have to go lateral. Okay, so you gotta put the hand in the lateral to get this in an, a PA projection. Okay, so you place the hand this way, and you have them stick out their thumb. So it becomes uh, parallel with the image will it be will, it, will there be slight magnification because of its position? Well, this, this is the alternate way of doing it. Okay, we don't want this, as Nick just said, well, are we going to get magnification? The answer is yes, you're going to get magnification with this. Okay, so what you would do then, what are you gonna to do to get that thumb closest to the image receptor? The corner of the table. Well, if you put it in the corner, you're not gonna get this. Yeah, so you're only gonna get part of it, so. Can you pop up the... Make it very uncomfortable. <laughs> you're gonna to have to internally rotate it until the palm, okay, until the thumb is flat on the image receptor. So now you're gonna do pinky up, thumb down. But going back, yeah, so now this will be an AP thumb. This is the more appropriate position to do. But is everybody going to be able to do this? I wouldn't even want to do that. Yeah. So what you're going to see out there are the text <coughs> and the thumb like this. Okay, with increased OID. All right. Now, do me a favor. Put, put your hand flat on the image receptor with your thumb just like that. Okay. See what happens to your, your fingers are straight up and down with the image receptor, but look at your thumb. What happens to your thumb? 
it's oblique, right? So after you position them like this, you're gonna turn the hand until the thumb is straight up and down. Okay? This will match the length of the image receptor. Otherwise, you're gonna have a thumb projecting sideways on your image. So not only are you gonna get the thumb isolated, but now you're gonna rotate it so it matches the length of your image receptor. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Again, we'll have time to practice this in the lab. This is what we prefer. Hard to do. But we're gonna do it. <clears throat> Where's the central ray directed? Uh, metacarpal phalangeal joint. Okay, it says here metacarpal phalangeal joint. Okay, basically that's your thumb attachment. Where it attaches to your, your hand. Okay, it's gonna be right at this knuckle. Okay. So that's your PA or your AP. Now imagine having to do this and then having to do this. Because okay, we don't want their eyes or thyroid in the way right now, so this is a hard position to do. But can it be done? Yeah, it can be done. But the key here again is don't force it. Okay? Because if you force it, you may cause more injury. And now you've got to extra your shoulder. <laughs> All right. So the long axis of the thumb is it matches the length of the image receptor. We can tell again that it's in a true AP or PA by the equal concavity on both sides of the phalanges. Okay. Yeah? So if you had concave and you had straight on one side, you know it's been obliqued, right? Yes. Right. <coughs> if you have equal concavity, then you know it's a either It's a true P AP or, or P. P. Right. <clears throat> now, collimation. For, the, uh, for these digits over here, we say open it up the collimation to include the distal the distal metacarpal. Here, we want you to include as much of the metacarpal as possible. Okay, so now the collimation is gonna come down here where your wrist is, right at the bottom of your wrist. So we want to include the entire metacarpal. Okay. So central ray is at the uh, metacarpal phalangeal joint. Open up your collimation to include the entire first metacarpal. <coughs> We know it's a true, again, it's a true AP or PA by equal concavity on all sides. Okay. Mark replacement wherever you can fit it. <coughs> Questions? Okay. So here's something interesting that I'm going to throw at you guys, our sesamoid bones. Sesamoid bones are found in locations uh, where a tendon passes over a joint such as the hand, knee, and the foot. Functionally, they act to protect the tendon and to increase its mechanical effect. That's not a fracture. <coughs> That's a tendon. I mean, sesamoid. it's a sesamoid bone. Okay. Where's the largest sesamoid bone found in your body? Patella. It's the patella. Okay. This is the patella of the thumb. It's a small sesamoid bone. So you usually found them in joint areas to protect the tendon. So when you see that, that's not a fracture. So it's most commonly seen at the thumb, at the bottom of your great toe, okay, because you'll see it underneath the great toe too, and then your patella is another place where you find the sesamoid bones. Which one, the sesamoid bone? Yeah. It can be anywhere. Yeah, it can be, it's usually right here, right about on the side. Is it, is it more prominent, like in a certain view, or just no? You can they see can in all of them. They can be floating anywhere. Oh, okay. I think that's what you were asking me. Right. Yeah, they can be floating anter anteriorly or posteriorly, but they're usually around that joint space. All right. Oblique thumb. Okay. When you place your hand for a PA projection palm down, your thumb is already oblique. So there's your oblique thumb. If my hand was straight up and down this way, okay, look at my thumb, my thumb goes off to the side, so I'm gonna rotate my hand until my thumb matches the length of my image receptor. Okay? Where's the central ray directed? 
It's the same as the other one. What is it? Yeah, MC, yeah, metacarpal phalangeal joint. Colony on all four sides to include the adjacent structure and also to include the entire what? Metacarpal. Metacarpal. It's partially oh, concave. Exactly. So you have concavity on one side and a straightening out on the other. That's how we know it's oblique. Right. And here we go. We have the famous, what's that up there? See, there's a sesamoid bone that's found near the, the distal, the distal phalanx. Okay, so they're found up there too. They'll be found down here. All right. Lateral thumb from a PA projection, supinated position, you're just going to raise your fingertips up until you get your thumb in a true lateral position. So you're just gonna raise up your fingertips. Now you can have the patient do it on their own, or again, suggest that you put some kind of bolster or sponge underneath the hand to maintain that position. Okay, central ray wear. MCP. MC, okay. Uh, collimation to include? The med uh, uh, metacarpal. metacarpal. Now, what do you think is going to happen to the concavity and linear um, surfaces of the, uh, the thumb in the lateral? Concave on one side? You can have more increased concavity on one side and uh, flatness on the other. So, the only, time, the only time you have equal concavity is when it's true AP or yes, PA? Yes, so the only time you have equal concavity is when it's in a true AP or PA. And the more oblique it is, more concavity, more flatness, and on a true lateral, more concavity, more flatness. All right. Any questions, folks? <clears throat> All right. Let's do the hand. You ready for the hand? We already, we already did most of these positions. We just isolated or collimated to just the fingers. fingers. Here, all we're doing here is we're opening up the field. Same body part position. So here's supination. We're going to spread the fingers. Okay, they don't, they don't have to be too wide. Just kind of spread them out so you can distinct one finger from the other. Centroid is going to be directed where? At the third uh, MCP. It's going to be your third knuckle, your third metacarpal phalangeal joint. joint. Yes. The third metacarpal phalangeal joint. Okay? Collimate all four sides. You want to include the fingertips. Don't cut off the pinky. Don't cut off the thumb. And now you're going to include, the again, we're including adjacent structures. The radius so and ulna, right? We want to include the radius and ulna. Okay? Include the radius and ulna. What's our SID here? 40 inches. 40, 40 inches. What's wrong with this image here? This is just strictly for demonstration, but... She's, she's facing it. <laughs> right, so is this appropriate for an exposure? No. No, because now you got in her throat and in her eyes. She's in the... <laughs> she's in the line of fire. Is that how they sound when they come out? Yeah. <laughs> so we wonder, what are we going to do? Turn her away. We're going to rotate her. Away. her. Do we want short exposure times, long exposure times? Short. Short, short exposure times, okay. KV, still about the low KV, oh, right? 50, We're right? still doing low. Okay. Remember, I'm just going to say low because it'll vary from facility to facility. Again, I was just giving you a baseline of what we do, what I've done. Some places, their lowest KV for fingers and hands may be starting at the 50s. I started at the 40s. Some facilities start at the 60s. Single phase, <coughs> phase, all that comes into play in selecting your technical factors. <coughs> all right. <coughs> So again, joints are open, right? And how do we know this is a true AP or PA? The thumb position? What do we really, yeah, they're all. Well, these, these are the fingers. Oh. These, these are the metacarpals. Oh, even concavity. Oh, is it? Okay, basketball player? Okay, so how do we know this is a true AP or PA? Equal concavity, right? From fingers to the metacarpals. Equal concavity on both sides. Joint spaces must be open. Okay? In this position, though, what happens to the thumb? It becomes oblique. It's an oblique. So you're going to have concavity on one side and flatness on the other. 
we've opened up the collimator to include the distal radius and ulna. Right? Is that a good x-ray? Because it really fades at the tip. Well, why? Because we're not focusing on the collimator. No, no, well, yes, 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 okay, but think about it. Why is it lighter here and darker in the fingertips? Exactly, it's thinner here and it's thicker down here. So you're going to have more penetration on the fingertips and less penetration towards the wrist. More penetration, more dark, less penetration, lighter. So there's, a, there's going to be a gradient of thickness from fingertips to the wrist. Now again, you guys are spoiled and lucky because now you have digital. You think you're going to have even density and contrast from fingertips to For the wrist? For the most part, yeah. Yes. Yes, I'm happy for you guys, but I also hate you. Because <laughs> we had to learn all the hard stuff, okay? <clears throat> all right, so no rotation. Concavities of shafts from two to five. You can't include one because this is in an oblique position, okay? So equal concavity from two to five, okay? Symmetrical soft tissue on each side, no overlapping soft tissue. Now, let's talk about the markers. Okay, we couldn't do it with the fingers, but we can do it with the hand. The proper placement for markers on extremities is on the lateral aspect. The lateral aspect. So for the hand, when I say lateral aspect, where are you going to place your marker? Thumb. Thumb side. Thumb, right. thumb side. Because you're going on true anatomical position, right? From the true anatomical position. Okay, so it's going to be on the thumb side. Also, the L and the R it doesn't matter. Just put a marker on there. I don't care if it's backwards or upside down, if the R is down there or the R is up there, just put a right marker on there. All I want to know is, is, is it the right or the left? You know what I mean? So it doesn't have to look pretty. It has to be there. It just has to be there. Yeah. Now unless you're OCD, <laughs> then it has to be perfectly straight. Okay. You, you come up with your own method of if you want the R up or down, okay. if you want it forward or backward. That's up to you guys. As long as there's a marker there that tells me if it's the right or the left, I don't care. Okay, but would other people care? It's up to your facility. I can't tell you what they do. So remember what we said in the beginning of the class? Do what they do. Do as they do. Okay? Do as they do. But what's important is you want to get your anatomical marker in the field. Okay? So if you're putting it on the thumb side for the hand, what happens to the toes? What happens to the feet? On what side is it going to be placed on now? The pinky side, on an anatomical position. So there is an actual etiquette of marker, marker placement okay, that we should follow. All right, oblique. Yeah, we did this on the previous slide, except now we're just opening up the field, right? Opening up the field. So we're including the fingertips. Not cutting off the thumb or the pinky, and we want to include the distal part of the radius and ulna. Yes? Mm -hmm. All right. Where is your central ray going to be directed? Third MCP. <coughs> it's going to be directed at your third knuckle. Here is the problem that I have. Okay? The book are general locations because if you are exact, can we turn off the left and foot back there, please? Okay. This is, taking, this is taking the instructions of central ray directed at the third metacarpal to its literal meaning. When you oblique it, you have all the space here. Okay, so you're open collimation. And look what's happening here to the thumb. It's cut off. What's happening? How do we know the thumb is being cut off? Because the shadow's outside the We're looking at the shadow of the image. If you haven't been told yet, because I, I, I made an effort to make sure that all my students know in my, in my labs, what you're looking at here, especially when you're doing extremities, tabletop, is you're looking at the shadow. The shadow is going to be what is going to be impressed or imprinted <coughs> on your radiograph. Okay? So I'm not only looking at my hand position, but I'm also looking at the shadow. So all the shadows are included within the light field, but look what's happening to my thumb shadow. It's what? It's cut off. It's cut off. So I can either bring the thumb in so it's included in the collimated field, or now, what happens if I open up my collimation? 
So I'll open it up to include this, but now I'm going to have a larger field on this side, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're opening it up, and it's going to open up like this. Now I've included the thumb, but I've got all this extra collimation field on the pinky side. Is that good or bad? Okay. It's unwanted or unnecessary exposure, right? Because you're also creating more scatter radiation. So what I say is, for test purposes, yes, then put for test purposes, central ray front oblique is going to be over the third metacarpal phalangeal joint. Yes? Mm -hmm. yes? What I'm going to tell you as photographers is place your subject in the middle of the light field, which means that you may not be over the third, you may between, be between the third and the second. So you, you, you would reposition the hand? I would re reposition the hand so I have equal shadows on each side of my collimation. Because when we play, when we role play, you will see that when you collimate your field and rotate your hand 45 degrees, you're going to have all this light field on the pinky and barely getting the thumb in. So I'm just going to slightly put my hand in the middle. Because that's what we do. We're photographers. You're placing our subject in the middle of your picture frame. Okay? And if you have, understand that concept, you're going to have it's going to be much easier for you guys because I want you guys to learn proper, okay, literal positioning. But when you go into the lab, you can be like, okay, I need to be right over the third metacarpal phalangeal joints. I get in with the second or third digit. Just put the part in the middle. <laughs> okay, put the part in the middle. Learn the literal meaning for tests, but for positioning in lab and when you guys are out there in the field, put the part in the middle. Okay? It'll be easier on you guys. Trust me on this. Because when you start overthinking what you're going to be doing on the lab, you're going to F yourself up. Trust me on that. Okay? Can you cut that out? <laughs> I'll, I'll edit you out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. PO, PO oblique of the hand. Okay? So, what do I do here? Okay. So, you can have them do it like this, but again, they may, be, they may be injured. It's hard for them to hold that position. So try to place something to support the hand to uh, minimize any type of movement. Can you guys see OK there with the lights completely off? You guys are OK? OK. <clears throat> so here they used a 45 degree angle sponge. All right. So you can use a 45 degree angle sponge. This is what I was talking about earlier. When you put the hand in a 45 degree, OK, Make sure that the fingers are parallel with the image receptor. Not like this, not like this. Because the moment you do this and this, what's going to happen to the joint spaces? Okay, close up. You're going to close. Okay? So putting the fingers parallel with the image receptor keeps the uh, joint spaces open. <clears throat> All right. Forty-five degree hand. Okay. How do we know it's a 45 degree hand? Because one side is concave. Slight concavity on one side straight and straightening or flattening on the other side. Here's some other criteria. The okay. thumb also has now more concavity on both sides because the thumb's kind of like rotating more. Because in. yeah, because now that you put in an oblique angulation, what's going to happen to the thumb? It's putting it more in what position? A true AP. A true AP or, or PA position. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now. In addition to the concavity and straightening or flattening on one side, this is your criteria for a hand. For an oblique hand, there is going to be overlap, overlap of the heads of three, four, and five metacarpal. There's going to be slight overlap of the head of metacarpals three, four, and five. Okay. Here's your other criteria. The heads of two and three are separated. So if I were to ask you a question, let's just say on a quiz, what is the criteria to determine or to show an oblique hand one of the one things you're going to tell me is what? Overlap. Slight overlap of 
It's three, four, and five. Okay. okay. Metacarpal, the head of metacarpal is three, four, and five, and what happens to metacarpals two and three? They're separated. They're separated. Okay. That's in, two, that's in addition to the phalanges in the metacarpals where there's going to be slight concavity and also a flattening of those bones. Okay. That's on top of that. Questions? <clears throat> All right. An oblique hand. Here's an oblique hand without using a positioning block. We do this sometimes where they can't raise up their hands, so we put it flat on the surface, but then they do this. Okay, it's kind of like doing, you know, putting your, your second digit and third digit together. It does place the hand in 45 degrees. You guys agree? Okay. What's the problem with that, though? Look at my fingers. What did we say the fingers have to be in, in the blink? They have to be, I heard it, parallel to the image receptor. So you can do this position if there's limited motion for the patient. It is acceptable, okay? It's not what we want, but it is acceptable. But the problem with that is that you're gonna have a closing of the of joints. This, of the joints. So it looks like the bones are overlapped on top of one another, right? So the joints are closed. Okay. But how do we know it's oblique? Again, this is probably this is a position that we don't prefer, but is it still meet the criteria of an oblique hand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, because we have slight concavity on one side, flatness on the other. Overlapping of three. We have overlapping of three, four, and five. And separation of opening, two. Opening separation of two and three. Okay. But the problem with this is the joint spaces and the phalanges are closed. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> Here's another example. Okay, all the joint spaces are closed, hard to see. Um, so the arrows are pointing to the joint spaces being closed, and this arrow is pointing to what? Fracture. <laughs> it's a fracture of what? Yeah. Which one? Second. Second metal part of Okay, so I want you guys to be specific. So it's a fracture of what part of the second metal part? The body. The body. body. Body or a shaft. Okay, good. And what's this? Sesamoid bone. Sesamoid bone. All right, good. Sesamoid bone. Transgenital. Okay. Fan lateral hand. Okay. It's a lateral of the hand, but we're going to adjust the finger so it's you're creating a fan, like so. Okay. 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 Okay, Compton in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Compton is, but anyways. Okay sign, okay? Spread the fingers. So the fingers are gonna be spread. It's gonna place the metacarpals in a true lateral position, okay? Again, we're gonna open up our collimation to include the fingertips and the wrist bones to include what? Radius and ulna. Distal radial, radius and ulna. Okay. So we do it this way because we're looking at both the carpal bones, the wrist, and also the fingers. It's a fan and lateral. Okay. So this projection position is good when also the phalanges are of interest. We do the fan lateral when. The fingers are also the parts of interest. The phalanges are the part of interest. Okay? And how do we know what's a true lateral position? The superimp. Superimposition of? Metacarpals. Okay. Metacarpals. Okay. And again, to, you were probably saying, well, the fingers are dark and the, the hands are light. Again, because there is a difference in thickness and densities from fingertips to the wrist, okay? So now with digital imaging, it's gonna correct all that, so you will have even density from tips to so wrist. So all these samples, these are all film? These are all film. <clears throat> okay? Questions? Now, <clears throat> this is what we don't prefer to do, okay? We don't prefer to do this because what happens to the fingers? Well, we're They're superimposed, so it really, it's hard to make a diagnosis when all the structures are superimposed. 
What this is good for though, okay, this is called lateral and extension. What this is good for is when we're trying to locate foreign body, like a BB, a piece of glass, some metal shavings. You understand what I'm saying? Foreign body. So this will help us determine whether or not the foreign material is more anterior or posterior. It'll also, because we're getting full alignment here, it'll also show us if there's any displacement of the phalanges and tell us which way it's been displaced. Would you, would you be able to tell which phalange it is from this point or not? You can, but you could in on an oblique. That's why we need to include an oblique in there. The oblique can help us. Okay, patient history can help us. So this is more of a, uh, it's not more of a, what do you call it, a studying of the, of the, the physical structures. Here we're studying more of displacement and foreign body. So I'm not looking for like bony hairline fractures or anything like that. I'm looking for displacement and foreign bodies. Okay. All right, any questions?